Welcome to ETAP webinar, Seamless Transition of Microgrids from Grid Connected to Islanded Mode. My name is Mohamed Zadeh and I'm your presenter today. In this webinar, first, we're going to look at the microgrid control system. We look at the role of microgrid controller and we specifically focus on the islanding transition functions, planned and unplanned islanding. We look at the ETAB microgrid control solution and how it can facilitate the seamless transitions for unplanned and planned islanding. We'll do a demonstrations of the unplanned islanding. We look at different cases and then we look at the planned islanding and see how the microgrid controller can uh, minimize the power at the point of interconnections to facilitate the uh, perfect planned islanding. And finally, I'll summarize this presentation. So let's just start with talking about the need of a microgrid control system. So when we are talking about the microgrid, uh, there are uh, several main attributes to it. The first one is the resiliency, and that's basically is the fact that the microgrid is able to operate in both grid connected and islanded mode. Uh, and in case of any problem on the grid side, the microgrid is able to island itself and be able to operate or at least provide service to the critical loads and utilize the available distributed energy resources, the green uh, energy to feed the critical loads and sustain till the utility or the grid is back or main grid is back and be able to reconnect back to the system. Another key attribute of the microgrid is that the microgrid concept makes the combinations of the distributed energy resources and loads together be more grid friendly. Okay, there are typically several requirements at the point of interconnections of the microgrid to the main grid. And uh, uh, what the microgrid control system does, it basically make, meets those requirements and makes sure that the microgrid is grid friendly. Let's say that there's typically a constraints on that the microgrid is, let's say, not supposed to export any power to the grid at certain locations. So the job of the microgrid controller system is to make sure that in case of the excess of the renewable power as compared to the lows, it utilizes, let's say, the energy storage to absorb the extra active power and make sure that there is no export power to the grid. There are also requirements on the active reactive power support during the disturbances to the system as well. Another aspect of the uh, microgrid is the efficiency. Typically, a microgrid control system allows to optimally utilize the renewable energy resources uh, typically, by having an energy storage, you can do a peak shaving, you can do price arbitrage, and you can make a mockery more efficient. You can make the usage of the renewables more efficient in a microgrid concept. Now, in order to make, let's say, these three attributes, resiliency, grid friendly, and efficiency, to be achieved, a control system is required. And uh, typically, uh, the key assets of the, this um, control system is a microgrid controller. So what is microgrid controller? Microgrid controller is a supervisory controller that can be physically implemented in a centralized or distributed manners. In a typical configuration, microgrid controller system is realized by a microgrid controller that is located close to a microgrid point of interconnections or point of common coupling. Now, this controller communicates with the local controllers of renewables, energy storage, uh, conventional generations, loads, and uh, directly or indirectly uh, controls those dispatchable assets, as well as it uh, communicates with the point of interconnection assets, uh, again, directly or through some other meters like uh, circuit breaker switches, and tries to basically achieve all those three main attributes that we discussed in the previous slide. Make sure that it can operate in both grid connected and islanded, and also makes the microgrid grid friendly, as well as we can do optimizations to make sure that uh, we are running the renewables efficiently in the system. Microgrid controller specifications. So IEEE issued a standard in 2017, uh, 2030.7, which, which is a technical specifications and requirements for microgrid controllers. As per this standard, three levels of control functions are defined for the microgrid control system. 
Level one control functions are lower level functions that are supposed to be implemented at uh, DERs, loads, or device level. Uh, you see that the voltage and control frequency, real and reactive power control, the device specific functions. Uh, level two control functions are the ones required at the microgrid point of interconnection level to facilitate transition between grid connected and islanded modes of operations, as well as rules to, let's say, dispatch microgrids. Uh, the level three control functions are higher level functions that perform supervisory control. A microgrid controller can typically provide level two and level three functions uh, together. Some of the level two is not all of them. Uh, let's say in this list, you see that there are supervisory, uh, distributed management system, operator interface, grid and market, optimal dispatch, communications. And uh, typically, a uh, typical microgrid is supposed to provide some level of optimal dispatch. It does some level of a scatter for that microgrid and communication as well. As per IEEE 2030.7 standard, there are four possible transitions. Uh, unplanned islanding, uh, it's shown in this graph as T1, planned islanding T2, reconnect T3, and black star T4. Let's quickly go through each one and try to understand what each transition is. So basically, if a microgrid happens to be in an islanded mode, either due to trip of the circuit breaker due to the fault next to the point of interconnections, or due to loss of grid at certain point and back feeding from microgrid to the grid, uh, uh, typically voltage drops and things like that, that uh, we realize at a point of interconnection that actually the grid support is lost. So we immediately trip the second breaker uh, at the point of interconnection. So all these conditions are typically the result in the islanded case. Uh, and, and typically, if there is no island request ahead of time, that's considered as the T1, which is an unplanned islanding. Uh, in contrary, if uh, the, there is a need to do, let's say, some maintenance at the uh, certain point, uh, certain part of the utility, and we want to go to the islanded mode, that then there could be a request to a mockery control system, and then the mockery control system prepares the mockery ahead of time. And at the time that it's supposed to go islanded, it makes a very smooth and perfect islanding to minimize the disturbance to the system, which this calls plan islanding, which is the T2, okay? When microgrid runs in the islanded mode and then the utility comes back and the voltage remains stable for a certain amount of time, the frequency is good, uh, the harmonic content and everything is good at the utility side, then the microgrid controller can uh, automatically reconnect the microgrid back to the system and bring back the uh, non-critical loads, or it can be through the um, confirmations and requests by operator to reconnect back to the system. Also, uh, anytime that microgrid uh, blacks out, whether the unplanned islanding was not successful uh, or the reconnect even sometimes not successful, we go to the blackout, and then what happens is that either we start uh, 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 start the assets one at a time based on a very unique or customized scheme to bring the assets back to the system and energize the microgrid. Or if the utility is available and the reconnect originally was not successful, we do a cord load pickup, we energize the microgrid from the utility size and then we bring back the asset one, uh, one at a time. So uh, basically this is kind of a different type of the transitions. Let's quickly take a look at each one, at least the ones that are important for this webinar. So the first one is the unplanned islanding. So the first thing is that we detect the island conditions. Uh, we create the island and then set local controllers and protective devices appropriately and then execute required planned actions, pre-planned actions, such as load shuttings, or if you want to do black star, trip all the assets and do the black stars, and transitions to the city set island at dispatch mode, okay? So we go a little bit through the ETAP demonstrations to understand how the unplanned islanding works, what are the details involved. Now, planned islanding is typically a mockery control system receives the islanding command, and tries to balance, uh, or before balancing load and generations, if it has time, if it's way ahead of time, 
it tries to prepare the microgrid for the islanded operations, charging a battery, uh, make sure that it has good amount of charge to sustain a microgrid for a long time. Then it comes to a few minutes prior to the island to balance load and generations. Uh, typically, it tries to uh, increase the power of the battery, the discharge power, uh, to minimize the import power. If requires to start a generator, it starts a generator, then if it requires a load shedding, if there's a significant amount of import power, it does the load shedding. So it brings the balance in both active and reactive power, and then also sets the local controllers and protected devices if protection system needs to adjust, and then it creates the island, and then transitions definitely to the islanded mode of operation. Now, black star again is, uh, as we discussed, this standard doesn't define anything as specified as it says that it's unique to each microgrid and keep in mind uniqueness means it's expensive, means that you need to have a special design development and test. So if we do a very good job on the unplanned islanding, uh, what happens is that we can avoid the black start. Okay, so as we go through the today's ETAP solutions for the microgrid and then the simulations, then the demonstrations, we realize that if we do very good jobs, if we do intelligence and dynamics on plan islanding as ETAP provides, we can avoid this black store and this unique expensive uh, design and development that is required for the microgrid. When, when we are talking about the on plan islanding, uh, Typically in a macro environment, we're importing power before loss of grid, okay? So what happens is that the moment that we lose the grid, typically immediately voltage drops. Typical uh, renewable resources, the DRs, there are typically control current source. And as the load drops, what happens is that as the grid uh, uh, drops, we are injecting less current to the load, so the voltage immediately drops, okay? Keep in mind that the DERs, uh, at least the ones that produce a good amount of active and reactive power, they provide higher reactive power injections during the voltage drop. So the DERs start to inject reactive power and bring the voltage back up. When we are talking about the macro grid, um, and specifically we are talking about the loads, we have to keep in mind that the type of the load drastically impacts the performance of the macro grid. When we lose the grid and voltage drops, if you are dealing with a static loads, what happens is that the active and reactive power consumed by the static loads uh, drops uh, drastically. Okay, because uh, these are impedance based and the power uh, that depends on the, uh, correlates with the VS score. Okay, so voltage drops, power drops even more. But if it's a motor loads, it's a different story. Motor loads, typically they're like a constant power, uh, active power, and if the voltage drop, they actually absorb more reactive power. So it's a different characteristic. So uh, modeling, knowing then how the load behaves is very important on the transients and be able to have a success with unplanned islanding, okay? So when we lose the grid and voltage drops, depending on how the load behaves and how much renewables can provide reactive power, the frequency varies. Means that it may go up and down. Uh, it's not just always because we lost the import power, we lose uh, the frequency. Drop. This is not like a synchronous machine system, a large system, that the loads typically uh, uh, does not change uh, that much. But here, because load depends significantly on the voltage, uh, the frequency actually may go the other way around too at certain points because Voltage drops, power may drop even more, frequency may actually go up for a certain point, but as the voltage builds up by injecting reactive power, uh, then the uh, basically active, uh, the load goes up and then the frequency drops. So it's a little bit have a different dynamics and behavior than a regular um, system. Now, the other thing that is very important to, to consider when we do the unplanned islanding is the right through capability. Typical um, 
grid codes mandates renewables DRs to write through the fault for at least 150 milliseconds. So if there's a fault and voltage even drops to zero, typical says that the renewables must sustain again, not all renewables, renewables above a certain size has to sustain at least 150 milliseconds. Or if the frequency varies within uh, several percentage, let's say that here, as you see in this one, if you look at, let's say the, uh, let's look at the tighter one here, okay? See that the frequency drops about two plus minus two hertz, it's still we're gonna sustain about one seconds or more. It means that the DR should not thrip if the frequency goes like uh, two hertz uh, plus or minus for like one seconds or two seconds. So, so you see that voltage is a, a higher kind of stricter requirements. But what does that mean is that if your macro grid goes to the unplanned islanding, okay, we as a macro grid controller, we should or a macro grid control system should have an unplanned islanding pre plan so be able to do all the load shutting, switching to grid forming, and everything before 150 milliseconds to make sure that you do not lose your uh, renewable supports, your energy storage, your uh, uh, the uh, wind or solar, whatever green energy we have. So it's very important to have a very high speed uh, on plan islanding. Now let's look at the ETA microgrid control system. But in this webinar, we will focus mainly on the key feature of our solution that allows to have a high speed dynamic on plan islanding. Uh, if you're interested to learn more about the ETAB microgrid, you can always go to the ETAB website and in the microgrid page, there are links to other webinars that talks in, in general about the ETAB microgrid solution. So this webinar will focus mostly on the, in, on the islanding transition. So ETAB microgrid control solution include mainly ETAB microgrid controller, which is a supervisory controller, and a gateway, okay, ETAB ICE gateway. Uh, and uh, this ICE gateway I will discuss has two roles. And with this dual or two components that one runs at very high speed and the other one that runs at the lower speed, we can achieve uh, both high speed uh, unplanned islanding, but at the same time doing a dynamic, sophisticated logics to be able to do uh, everything all the way from planning the unplanned islanding strategy as well as all the way to optimizations, do advanced calculations for the macro grid, be able to do stuff like forecasting. So in a typical solutions that we have these two components, uh, as I said, we have a gateway and we have a macro grid controller. One of the roles of this gateway to understand is that is Typical when we are dealing with a macro grid, we are dealing with different assets that may communicate with different protocols. One of the jobs of the gateway is to be able to communicate through different protocols, 6050, DMP3, Modbus, and all other common protocols. And even it has a hardwire connections, the analog inputs or uh, 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 digital inputs and outputs. Uh, and convert everything to a unified kind of protocol at this point, DMP3, and soon it's going to be Modbus 2, to an ETAB macro gate controller. Uh, the second important job of this gateway is that it has a built-in PLC that it runs at a few milliseconds uh, execution rate, and it can do things fast. Let me go to the next slide. Actually, it shows uh, how we do the... Uh, higher speed unplanned islanding. So a macro grid controller typically runs at every few seconds, okay? And it uh, looks at the active power control, reactive power control, but at the same time, it also devised strategy for unplanned islanding every few seconds, okay? It looks at how much renewables we have in the system, how much battery capacity, state of charge we have, how much loads we have. It knows about all the priorities of the loads, their characteristics. It knows how much power we are importing from the grid. Uh, it knows about the forecast of the system. So based on that, at every few seconds, it says that what if 
I'll go to the island that month. What if I lose the grid? It comes with the intelligent dynamic strategy for islanding and writes that a strategy in forms of the potential commands for different assets in this gateway. So there will be registers per each DER and the loads that says that in case that islanding happens, what each asset should do potentially. Then there is a small interlock between the relay uh, at the point of our meter, at the point of interconnections, either to the hard wire or to the goose message or something of a fast nature to this PLC within this gateway. And the moment that things get triggered, <clears throat> it will immediately send a command to the asset on things that needs to happen. Okay, so that's one way to do it. That the moment things happen, typically goose message few milliseconds comes to the gateway and through the goose message, it also sends command to the asset few milliseconds and be able to within, let's say two, 300 milliseconds to command the asset to do the load shedding and stuff. Typically circuit breakers of the DRs also take time to trip the loads, but we are able to within less than 150 milliseconds to be able to bring back the voltage up to avoid any uh, undesired tripping of the renewables and DRs from the system. The other way to do it is also is this logic. Uh, if the DRs have a controller that they can be in some extent programmed, this small logic can be actually interlocked with the POI can be implemented at the DR level as well and the loads level sometimes. That uh, in case that Typically what happens is that you have a load controller or relay, so you can customize some logic here and have interlock to a point of interconnections and the microgrid controller can write to the relay at the, for the loads to say that if there is a loss of grid, what needs to trip and also for energy storage, if they have a programmability or something, we can send a command that in case that we lose the grid automatically switch from grid following to grid forming. Okay, so this architecture having a two components allows one running at few milliseconds and one at few seconds allows to get the best of both worlds. Have a sophisticated logic that here in the mockery controller can do advanced stuff and dynamically based on the system status updates the schema for the for the islanding and also have a PLC based approach with a few milliseconds to immediately react and island the system, uh, do the load sheddings and grid falling to forming to sustain the macro grid. Let's look at the one more time summarize what we said the macro grid controller dynamically device islanding strategy. It looks at the available distributed energy resources and their characteristics. It looks at the load priorities and their characteristics. User may have some settings and priorities as well that can set it up. And then uh, it sets islanding registers in gateway. So that the logic in the gateway is very simple. There are a bunch of uh, predefined registers by the mockery controller at the gateway level. And there's just an interlock that the moment we uh, see that the grid is lost, we immediately dispatch those commands to the asset. Okay. So we send islanding transition commands upon grid loss. Very simple. Now, for demonstration today, uh, we want to demonstrate unplanned islanding and planned islanding. Uh, in a typical microgrid uh, control environment, in order to do a good demonstrations, you need to have a lab with the typical real-time digital simulator. Then you have your hardware, you uh, connect them together. You have your microgrid model in a real-time simulator. And then you have your macro controller, you run scenarios and looks at the performance of the system. That's what a typical uh, macro control solution uh, does. But in ETAB, uh, uh, if you look at our previous uh, webinars on our macro grid solution, we use a digital twin concept. Means that our macro controller has a identical digital twin, let me go here, it has an identical digital twin that can be used in the ETAP simulation environment and that basically anything we want to uh, test, develop, enhance, uh, do evaluations, we can do in the simulation environment We make sure that it works and then this digital twin gets deployed into the box. 
This digital twin is not the model, it's the actual code that runs inside the box, runs actually in the software environment. It's a cross-platform, uh, 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 basically, uh, technology that runs in both Linux and Windows. And this allows us to use it for design and feasibility study. We can do evaluations, test it in front of the user. We can use it for sizings of the assets and we can do optimal settings. And also we can use it to our develop and test uh, as a developer and tester in, the, in our company. So that's another great advantage that we actually develop the digital twin, test it once we're happy, we deploy and test it in the hardware. Okay, let's now go to the demonstration. Now, let's look at a quick demonstration. So here I have a simple macro grid. Uh, I have about uh, 1.2 MVA uh, wind. I have 1.2 MVA solar. I have 1.2 MVA battery with uh, 2 megawatt hour capacity. I have about 4 MVA load. And then uh, the good thing about using ETAP for a microgrid solution is that ETAP provides the uh, good primary controllers uh, for uh, microgrid. So here you can see the, all the basically parameters of the control system. A generic model that we have for our primary controllers are based on a, a WEX second generation model. And here you can set all the parameters for P control, Q control. And if you have a grid forming, it provides uh, also outer control loop and inner control loop for the grid forming as well. So a very uh, tested, validated model is available for the uh, grid falling and grid forming uh, uh, performance. Typically it's used for energy storage rather than use for the PV for PV typically if you use just the or VIN we use grid uh, following then it has also the right through capabilities low voltage right through high voltage right through low frequency right through high frequency right through now if you have a black box model also you can use a black box model instead of the generic model but uh, typically when it comes to the Mokrogi controller performance evaluations uh, especially uh, if you're looking just look at the typical active reactive power control using the generic models are fine. Uh, if you want to do a certain, let's say, uh, plan or um, uh, um, unplanned eye landing, sometimes it's better uh, at the design stage to good use generic model. But at the final stage, if you want to validate everything, you can use also a black box model. So we have the model for the renewables. We have models for energy storage again, where you can define basically the uh, operating parameters, the uh, minimum charging, discharging, the capacity stuff. So here I have my uh, energy storage. And then I have the Mokrogi controller. You see that we have a digital twin of every uh, device. So we have this controller element that connects to a DLL, which is a kind of a black box model of ETAP Mokrogi controller. As you see here is that we have all those uh, required functions for a microgrid control system. We have the forecasting, active power, you can do rule-based dispatch, economic dispatch, each one again, you can define the optimizations problem or in the rule-based, you can define what are your rules in terms of the uh, import and export power, uh, pick shaving stuff. And then you have your reactive power control that you can do uh, voltage or reactive power or power factor control at the point of interconnections of the microgrid. You can define which assets to use as a priority, whether to use energy storage phase, PV second, capacitor, statcom. You can use all those devices. There are other functions, but today we're going to first focus on unplanned eye landing and then planned eye landing. So the, the first functions that we're going to look is the uh, uh, unplanned eye landing. Let me go to the case uh, that I'm going to show first. So we're going to go to the case, uh, this case. Let's go to the microgrid controller one more time. Go to the unplanned eye landing. So uh, in this unplanned eye landing, I'm defining that my unplanned eye landing is enabled and uh, we're going to have the battery as a grid former device. Uh, uh, the threshold for blackout is 70% means that if the import power is uh, more than 70% of the, the entire load in the system, uh, and maybe it's better to directly go to the blackout rather than try a seamless eye landing. 
we're gonna keep 10% reserve margin for the going to the islanded mill. So it means that uh, we need to shed a little bit more load or have more generation assets available to maintain the system. There could be some stabilization time it means that uh, in order to devise the strategy for islanding, we have to have a first stable system. And then we devise a strategy, we send it to the gateway, and in the gateway, we wait. The moment that we detect the trip, we go and act uh, upon it, okay? Now, we are giving one second for the seamless islanding. If beyond one second system doesn't come back to normal, we go to the blackout, okay? So this is a simple settings for the unplanned islanding. Keep in mind that we have the loads that's defined in the systems, their circuit breakers, and then we have the load priorities that uh, uh, in what priority we're gonna shed loads. Let's say that uh, lump five uh, load in this system is the one that's gonna be shed first and then lump four and so on and so forth. We have the inrush currents. Uh, this is typically for the black start, but we have it here. We also have curtailment priority means that in case there are microgrids that allow to export power to the system, and if you have excess of generations, we can actually, rather than do load shedding, we do curtailing of the sources, okay, of the system. <clears throat> Let's quickly go ahead and run one case and take a look at the performance. So I'm going to go ahead and run the islanding high load. Let me go ahead and run this case. I'm running trains in a stability simulation for, uh, I think, a few seconds. And uh, what we are expecting here is that at the time zero, <clears throat> as you see here, we are importing about uh, 1.64 megawatt and 0.647 megawatt. So we are importing power from the grid. And then at time uh, 11 seconds, at time 11 seconds, just before the fault, okay, let me just go before the loss of the grid. Still, we have that 1.65 megawatt, 0.646. Uh, I'm giving 10 seconds or 11 seconds of simulation for a reason that I will explain. So nothing is almost happening. System is running as it is in a steady state condition. And then when the, we lose the grid, okay, once we lose the grid, you see that immediately voltage starts dropping. And then uh, the microgrid controller ahead of time programmed our gateway to trip a certain load based on the power balance in this scenario. You see that it trips the lump five circuit breaker and it sustained the system. Okay, before we go into the details of how we do the settings, how this works. So let's first plot the voltage magnitude. Okay, as you see here, I have about, uh, I have at 11 seconds that there is a trip and uh, as you see here is that the immediately voltage drops, but as we do the load shedding, voltage comes back and then the battery in grid forming tries to maintain the system. And as you see, voltage comes back to the pre-fault or pre-disturbance level in this case. And the key important thing here is that as you see in this graph, uh, with less than 150 milliseconds, we were able to bring back the voltage and voltage didn't drop that much also because we were importing only 1.6 megawatt. Voltage didn't go even below 70%. So we managed to bring back the voltage. Keep in mind the renewables also inject reactive power in this case. Now, let's look at what happened in a little bit more detail here. The microgate controller execution rate is five seconds. Means that microgate controller for this case runs every five seconds. It runs at time zero, it runs at time five, at time 10. It looks at the system conditions and based on that, says that, okay, I am importing 1.64 megawatt. My battery is not doing anything, but it can generate one megawatt power. So if I go to the islanding conditions, uh, I am lacking 64 megawatt, okay? We need also some reserve margin, 10% as well, which is around uh, uh, some, some kilowatts here, okay? So what it says that, okay, I have a load, let's say lump five, which is right now at the about 0.75. So if I shed this load, 0.75, okay, and I have one megawatt here, I have enough power to accommodate or uh, compensate the loss of the grid. That's why it only 
program the gateway to only share basically lump five that's enough to sustain the system so uh, uh, the other thing that it does that it's discrete battery if i go to the battery uh, this battery has the command set up to communicate to the remote control so this battery is communicating to this gateway if I go to this gateway and go to the associated device list, you see that this battery is controlling and monitoring this uh, battery controller, BES controller here. And the moment we do the uh, islanding strategy, we define this grid forming source battery and our loads. So what happens is that the mockery controller commands the gateway and gateway commands the battery and the loads to actually shed and also better to switch to grid forming. So you see that we have a full digital twin of all the primary controller, secondary controller, the relay at the point of interconnection, the gateway and everything. So what this does, it allows to maintain the system. Let's also look at the bus frequency very quickly as well. As you see here that we have the bus frequency too. So uh, as the uh, voltage drops, if you remember what I mentioned that sometimes uh, when you lose the grid, the power drops, the import power drops. But what happens is that because of the voltage drop, the load drops also significantly at one point. So that helps actually to make a balance in sometimes in macro. Again, it depends on the load. But rather than frequency going down, it actually goes up in this case. Okay, In this case, actually, it's going up. But the moment that inverters start putting more reactive power and the battery starts to inject more power, the voltage comes back, loads come back, but the load shedding helps to shed the load, provide the power balance, and bring back the frequency to the case. Now, if I also plot the, my uh, powers here, you can see also the powers that I have. Let me uncheck this and uh, uncheck all and plot the megawatt two. And you can see also the, uh, uh, the the load and generations here that you you had the load at about this much because we shared and uh, the battery went all the way from the zero up to a certain amount to compensate what is needed for the system. OK, and we maintain the reserve margin as well. If you look at the battery is at a certain value to maintain the reserve margins of the system. OK, so this one case that uh, I'm demonstrating now go to the another case where uh, in this case, I have lowered my PV generation. Let's say that it's uh, early morning or late uh, afternoon or evening and I have lower PV high load. And what's going to happen is that if I run this case. So again, we are running the similar case and this time we are going to look at the uh, point of connection power and see how much we are importing. So in this case, actually, it's 2.6. So we are actually importing more power from the system. Mockery controller looks at how much power is available to uh, import and how much power is available by the sources and the loads and tries to do the load shedding. So if we go here and look at what's happening, we lose the grid and this time Mockery controller is going to shed three Loads. Keep in mind, it's, it's not the mockery controller shedding the loads, it's the gateway shedding the loads. Okay, is the mockery controller that programs the gateway ahead of time, probably five seconds earlier, maximum five seconds, that in case we lose the grid, what needs to happen? So gateway is a little bit just dummy, just it looks at the trigger and it applies the command. The mockery controller is the one that depending on the input power and the availability of the resources says what needs to happen. So it dynamically updates the load shedding logic. And as you see here, again, if I go to my bus, again, look at my voltage and frequency, you see that the mockery controller, that the combined ETF solution, be able to maintain the voltage and frequency within the limits. And we didn't lose any PV or anything from this system. Uh, right now, you see that my communication delays are little, but if you want to get more communication delay at the circuit breaker trip times and things, you can always go here and add the communication delay and, and see the performance at that 20, 30 milliseconds communication delay and see how the system behaves.
another important function in a macro that macrogy controller is supposed to provide is the plan islanding. In the plan islanding, what happens is that typically a system operator or a distribution system manager sends a command ahead of time to the microgrid controller and says that I want to island this microgrid in, let's say, four hours from now and I want to maintain it for two hours. And uh, what happens is that the mockery controller is going to slowly brings down the active and reactive power at the point of interconnections, make sure that the power is balanced, and then disconnect the circuit breaker. For this mockery grid, typically the, the one that I'm studying here, the reactive power is not that much and we are mainly focusing on active power balance. Now, Again, in ETAB environment, the commands always come through the gateway. So in our digital twin for the gateway, we created already a case that user can say that I want to send some commands of plan islanding, emulate the plan islanding commands. So we say that in the first day of the simulations at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, so we are running 24 hours of simulation at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, 0 minutes and 0 seconds, we are going to send a request for plan islanding. And we said that we want to do plan islanding at four hours from eight, which would be 12 hours, 12 o'clock noon. And we want to have a two hours durations. So what the uh, microgrid controller does, it looks at the forecast of the loads, generations. Uh, it looks at the seed of charging the battery and does some calculations that in order to maintain the two hours of the islanded operation, uh, how much battery needs to be there, how much load shedding is needs to happen, uh, what assets needs to bring up if you have a backup diesel generator and things like that. So in this case, I'm running a scenario for 24 hours. Okay, let me run this scenario that I've prepared already. So plan islanding, we are going to run time domain load flow in this scenario. 24 hours, 8 o'clock request, 12 o'clock is going to bring down the power, but ahead of time also is going to charge the battery. Okay, so we ran 24 hours and let me plot the power, active power of different assets. As you see here, that uh, we send with the moment that we send the request, okay, we already had our battery charge in somewhere here, okay. Uh, the battery had full charge uh, or enough charge to sustain the two hours. So the key point is here: few minutes before we're going to the islanded mode, what the microgrid controller does is gonna actually start, let's say the battery brings up the power of the battery, and this results into bringing down the active power at the tie cable. So this is, if I just remove the PV and keep the battery here, you see that as the battery goes up, the power comes down. And the moment that it reaches to certain level, it has some dead band around 100 kilowatt. The next time a step, which is about oh, five seconds from now, it can actually do the islanding. So this is another uh, important functions of a macro grid that uh, whenever we want to have a plan uh, seamless islanding, we can use a plan islanding. So far, what we have done was a pure simulation using the digital twin of the macro grid as well as the digital twin of the macro grid controller. We ran a bunch of simulations and we showed that how the unplanned eye landing or planned eye landing works in a simulation environment. Now let's take this to another level. The next level is we go ahead and look at this microgrid controller. We can uh, we have a part that we can define the settings of this microgrid controller. So let's imagine that uh, I want to test this in a real time with the real time digital simulator. So how it's going to be the entire system, the entire system is going to be modeled in the real time digital simulator. And then the microgrid controller is going to be a hardware uh, connected to the communication. Right now I have my microgrid controller at the IP address of 10.10.10.172. And this computer that we are working on right now 
is at the IP address of 10.10.0.45. ETAB has a DMP3, interf uh, DMP3 interface that can uh, put the data out, all the measurements that microgrid needs, and the microgrid control hardware at this IP address has a DMP3 client that can grab those data, process them, the same logic that runs in the digital twin, and sends the output back to the microgrid. So what we are going to do here, as you see in the communication sections, we have the IP address of this device. We are going to use the 20001 as the port number for DMP3. It has source ID, uh, destination ID, some of the default numbers I'm not going to touch. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to deploy. What the deploy does, it creates a package, which is a MGC file. It creates a package of all the logics, which are a DLL of the digital twin, plus all the settings, the connectivity, the network informations, and put them in a package. And we can go ahead and upload that into our microgrid controller. So we go here and say upload. This controller deploy, upload. So all the logic settings, everything is now moved, uploaded into the box in a few seconds. Done. So you can go ahead and we can look at the settings of the microgrid controller. Okay, different settings that we have here. Now, once that's done, Let's come back here and say that I've created a study case with a little bit longer simulation time. I have about 180 seconds. I want to give more time to be able to go on the real time side to be able to go through the different dashboard and see how it works. But after two minutes, 120 seconds, I am going to, uh, we have an event to trip the circuit breaker at the point of interconnections and see how the Mokrugi controller actually transition this uh, microgrid from grid connected to the islanded mode. So we looked at a study case. The other thing that we need to look at here is that we have a setting here, simulation mode. So if it is normal, it just runs the pure simulation. Okay, it runs a pure simulation. If I run a tester mode, it runs it in a, a real-time manner, but the logic is not getting executed here. The data is transferred over communication to the hardware, is like hardware in the loop and hardware processing it and sending the output back to the ETAP, that where the system is. Okay. Now this system, it was faster than real time. If you run this system, it's going to run less than 180 seconds. So this means that for this size of the system, or a little bit even larger, we can always go real time. Keep in mind, we are running every one millisecond here in the transient stability. But the data gets exchanged over DMP3 with the speed of or the, with the resolutions of the microgrid execution rate every five seconds. So data goes every five seconds to the basically uh, DMP3. We can control that. We can go a little bit even faster. We can go even every one second to the DMP3, even though microgrid controller runs every five seconds. Okay. So let's do that. So we are in the tester mode right now in the tester mode. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and run this. So it's supposed to take 180 seconds. Okay, now let's go to ETAB. Let's go to our uh, microgrid page. Let me refresh this page. You see that we are grid connected. Grid connection is on. We have about 2.60 megawatt import from the grid. Frequency is 50 hertz. I have about 98.9% .9 voltage at both sides of the grid and macro grid. Okay. We can look at our energy storage at this point. Uh, we have we have a command, but macro grid is in advisory mode. It means that it doesn't send any command. You see that? The macro grid doesn't charge. If I go here and say that I want to go out of the advisory mode and come back to energy storage, in a second, let me increase the resolution here. In about a second or so, we are going to be switching to the uh, enabled mode. So, microgrid controller sends a command of 103, and we are char uh, uh, discharging 103, and we are dis actually discharging 103 in the system too. Now, if we go to the page, I have unplanned ironing page, and in this page, you see that at this point, it says that if we lose the grid, you see that this gets updated every five seconds. If we lose the grid, we are supposed to shed three loads, very similar to what we saw in the simulation. And, and battery has to go to grid forming. Now, in about a few seconds, once we reach 30 seconds, once we reach to the two minutes, microgrid is going to switch to the uh, uh, 
islanded mode. And because this information is already transferred to the gateway in the simulation, uh, it knows what to do. So it doesn't need to wait. Okay. So we go now to the uh, macro grid and let's look at the macro grid here. So in about a few seconds, we should go off. Let me just in reduce the resolution to, uh, the resolution here. So we see that we are in the grid connection on and in about a few seconds, we should transition to off. There you go. Now we are in the islanded mode. Things happen very quickly. Okay, in less than a second, system gets back to normal. You see that both side frequency are 50 system didn't collapse. Okay, now let's go and take a look at the load. Look at here. You get here. I have three loads that they lost power. Okay, only two loads have power. So we have done a successful load shedding here. Microgrid is in islanded mode. And we can look at what's happening with energy storage. Okay, we're not sending any more command to the battery. Battery is in the grid forming and the power gets determined by the system voltage and frequency. No more command and SOC is going to drop at, uh, at SOC at this point. We are exporting power. We are exporting power so SOC is going to go down. So now let's go back. Simulation is done. We just ran for three minutes and let's look at the performance of the system here. We did the load, three load sheddings. And if I go and plot the bus voltage, if you remember the simulations, we exactly get the similar performance. Okay, system comes back to normal. So with that, we show that actually how nicely you can use ETAB as a real-time digital simulator and how easy it is that from the software simulation go all the way to the hardware simulation. Now with that, let me go back to uh, my presentation and summarize this, this in this webinar, first we introduced microgrid control system and explained the important role of microgrid controller. We focus mainly in this webinar on planned and unplanned islanding, and we discussed that in order to have a successful unplanned islanding, it is important to have a high-speed dynamic islanding strategy to succeed seamless islanding. ETAP has used these concepts of a kind of intelligent load shedding, where a controller devices, a, a kind of a server or a, a higher level supervisory device comes with the strategy using all the information in the system dynamically every few seconds and kind of programs or finds and tunes a PLC uh, or high speed device that's ready that upon a trigger, which can be a grid loss detection or circuit breaker trip, immediately acts and does, let's say, a load sheddings or grid forming battery, mode change and things like that. Now, we talked about ETAP solution and we did two sets of demonstrations. Number one, we use a pure simulation, the digital twin of the microgrid and digital twin of the microgrid controller. And we showed that you can do lots of simulation testing, fine tuning and evaluations of the systems. When we were happy with the performance, we deployed that the controller digital twin and we uploaded into the microgrid controller hardware. Then we started a testing a mode in ETAB and ran ETAB as a real-time digital simulator uh, with the DMP3 uh, server and microgrid controller is a DMP3 client. So data went over the communications from one PC to the microgrid controller hardware. The logic got executed and we saw that uh, the, the unplanned islanding strategy in real time and uh, once the event happens with the grid loss, we saw that how the uh, gateway knew what to do based on the microgrid strategy or advice ahead of time and did the load shedding, switched the battery to grid forming and maintain the system. So with that, I'm done with my presentations and thank you for your uh, attention and I'm more than welcome to any question.